If you're feeling like making videos is time consuming, exhausting, or stressful, I totally get the feeling. I hear it from creators all the time. They feel overwhelmed to the point where they keep postponing their tasks and sometimes they end up not creating content at all. When I got started, I was in this video making rut and I also hated the process. But it doesn't have to be that way. There is a simple way to make videos faster and get out of this rut. All you need is a solid YouTube filming plan and editing process. Then your video creation can be planned and most importantly faster. Now starting out on YouTube I was really just running on autopilot. I would come up with a random topic idea and I would go and shoot the video and there was definitely times where I could forget stuff that I wanted to include in the video or even times where I went the complete opposite end of the spectrum and I would just be repeating stuff over and over to really really hit the point home. Our videos had no structure and no flow so not only were they frustrating for me to make and took a long time they were also hard for our viewers to follow along with as well and actually to see value on them. My brain would just jump from one thing to another and while I thought I was just being real and just being authentic, it was stressful and it was painful to make these videos that way. It wasn't until we really started planning out our content and structuring it properly that our channel started to grow and our content became much quicker to film. I was then able to film two videos in the time that it used to take me to do just one. So now this is what I do for every video. We start Start off first with research. We're researching the topic of the video to see exactly what people are searching for in relation to that topic. So what are the things that people are typing into YouTube or into Google that your content is going to be fit for? This is going to help you know that there is demand for your content that people actually wanted before you create it. And it's going to help you lock down the topic so that you know exactly what the video is going to be about. But also who you're speaking to and at what level inside of the video too. So based on this, you will be able to decide you're creating a beginner focused video or something more advanced for someone that's further along. So if you're someone who is struggling with this and you're trying to draw the line as to how much content you should actually include in your video, that's normally a good indication that your topic might be too broad. So by trying to niche down, it's going to make it easier for you but you really wanna get into the headspace here of your viewer. What should they expect? What do they need to know? What do they want to be covered in your video content? Whether you're teaching them something or whether you're entertaining them. Next up, we pull together a full plan or even a full video script for some videos so that all I need to do is just to get in front of the camera and know that everything is good to go. There's definitely been times where I'm halfway through filming a video and then I'm wondering if the information is correct or wondering if I've missed something. You wanna to get to that place where you have everything good to go. You don't wanna be thinking in front of the camera because that's the time to present and to share. Now, a big part of this video planning does boil down to your video structure and what you're gonna say and when you're gonna say it inside of your video so that not only is it gonna be easier for you to present, but it's also gonna be easier for your viewers to stick around and be engaged with your videos for longer. The next thing we do is block out some time. And I know this one sounds like a no-brainer, but I know so many people are doing what we used to do and not blocking out enough time or trying to block out just enough time to shoot one video. But how many times does something come up or when you go to shoot that video, you might be sick or your neighbor might have a birthday party, for example. By not blocking out extra time, every time something goes wrong, it's just going to add to the pressure of your creating that video. Now it could be as simple as the process of having to set up and pack up all of your camera gear every time you want to shoot a video. This was something for me that once I had the camera gear set up and ready to go and I could just walk in the room, turn on the lights, press record and I'm good to go. There is no setup or pack up. This felt like it freed me up a lot and I was able to create videos much much faster. You'll also want to make sure that everything on the tech side is good to go too. Your batteries are all charged or ideally you're plugging them into wall power so you don't have or need to worry about batteries. Your microphone level should also be fine so you can quickly go back without needing to try and set everything up from scratch again. And another obvious one is to put all your devices on don't disturb mode or flight mode so that you're not being distracted or being interrupted while you're shooting. So all of this stuff so far will help you film more effectively. And when you're filming more effectively, there is less mistakes, which means that your editing is gonna be faster as well. The next thing I do know for a lot of videos is a practice run off camera before the filming process. Just reading through the script or reading through the bullet 
points, pretending like you're presenting to the camera is gonna identify any of those stumbling blocks or anything that you might have missed in the script or in your preparation, instead of just trying to do that while you're filming. Another thing we're doing now is we're shooting with the editing in mind or shooting with the end result in mind. So this means that we're not just filming for filming sake, we're only trying to capture the stuff that we know we're going to use in the video. So again, we've got less footage to edit, making the editing faster. But the other thing that I'm doing while I'm filming is that I'm only moving on to the next piece of content or the next sentence once I'm happy with the last take. So I'm trying to make the last thing that I say for a specific section of the video the best take and the one that I want to use in the finished video. Now this can slow down the filming a little bit, but it can speed up the editing dramatically. So instead of working through our videos start to finish, we're actually working from the end backwards and they're hitting all those best takes much, much easier. They're able to find them and edit them much faster. By implementing all of this stuff that I've just shared with you, we're now able to make two videos in the time that it used to take me to do just one. But it was taking me the whole week to come up with an idea, to go and shoot the video, to edit the video, and then I would be back on that hamster wheel doing the whole same thing the very next week. So that's where it was frustrating, and it wasn't until we started implementing this stuff that we really freed up a lot of time, started working in batch and bulk creating content. Now, after you make your videos, the next step is to optimize them. And in this video, I'll show you how to do it step by step.